Hello everyone and welcome. In today's video, I want to share my 10 favorite DV features. But before we get started, I want to talk about my bonus. Now, if you buy DV using my affiliate link, I will give you access to my course, which teaches you pretty much everything that you need to know about designing professional looking websites using DV. It's called DV Blueprint 3 course. All you have to do is to use the affiliate link below and then send me an email and then I will give you access to my course worth $247. All right, let's dive in and let's get started. So my first feature is A-B testing. Now A-B testing is fantastic because you can actually uh, see which page is performing better than the other because on the outset it's very difficult to see which page is performing better based on the headline colors or the image used so a b testing is the best tool for that now let me show you how you can quickly set it up so over here all you have to do is to right click over here and then click on split test so what happens here is you uh, given this um, notice here you click ok now we want to test how many people click on this rev reservation button. So this is my goal. So I'm going to click here, then click OK. Now what has happened is this whole section here has been duplicated. Now we have two versions of this. So what we can do now is to go in, change the background or change the background color, change the heading, and then see which one performs better. So it's very, very easy to set up. So uh, let's say I come over here to my wireframe mode. I can actually see the two different versions. So you can see here, we have number one here on the top, and then we also have number two. So these two are very, very similar. So all you need to do is to go into one of these and then make your changes onto that. Right, so, so here I'm gonna switch over to my desktop view, and then I'm just gonna change a few things here. So let's say I come over here and change my background image. So let's say I choose this one here, click upload an image, and then uh, maybe uh, you could change the heading here. So for now, I'm just gonna save. Now, let me show you the two versions that we have. The first one here, you can access it by clicking that uh, little drop down arrow. So now let's view this. So if I click here on uh, desktop mode, this is where we can cycle through between the two versions. So you can see here by clicking on this little arrow, it's cycling through. So what will happen now is when people come to this landing page, 50% sees one version and 50% sees the other version. So let's say uh, if you're tracking how many people click on this button here, uh, we also have stats. So you're able to see how many people are clicking on which version so, and that enables you to choose which version is better. So if I come over here now on these little bars which are animating, this will show me the analytics. So here we can see how many clicks, uh, we can see how many people have read, we can see how many bounces there are, and also the goal engagements. Now at the moment, we don't have any information here because uh, we haven't run the test, but if you let it run over, uh, let's say a week or so, you're able to see which version is performing better than the other. And once you get that information, you can just come here and click on end split test and pick winner. So it's as easy as that. All right, so let's move on to the next one. And the next one is also my one of my favorite ones, and it's the color manager. So let's say you set up all your colors in your, in your DV options. So what you do is every time you go to any uh, uh, module, you're able to see that color palette, and it also shows you colors that work well together that you can actually choose from that color palette. So let me show you what I mean by that. So let's say over here, I wanna add a background color. So we can see our color palette is here, and these are my colors from my color palette. Now, if I click these three little dots here, notice that we have even more colors that we can use. Now, these colors are based on an algorithm, which means that you can use these colors and they will work well together throughout your design because they are based on your initial colors. So this is where you get to choose your colors. So let's say I go with that. So now that is my color. And also, this color manager has this feature here which, uh, which um, shows you your recent used colors. Now, this is really cool because if you didn't have this feature, it meant that you would have to copy the code, uh, the hexadecimal code from maybe a document and then keep using those, uh, copy and pasting those uh, every time you need to use that color. So if I click here on recent, you can see here that these are all the recent colors that I've used on this design. Okay, so I'm not gonna save this, I'm just gonna close that. Now let's move on to the next feature and the next feature is the clone existing page. So 
Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to open this in a new tab. All right, so let's say I want to create a clone of, a pay of an existing page or an existing blog uh, design. All I have to do is to come over here, click on Add New. So I can give this page a name. I'm just going to call this Test Page. Click on Use Divi Builder. Now, this is where we get to see these three options. And uh, a lot of the times, if you see my tutorials, I mainly use these two options. I either choose a pre-made layout or I build from scratch. But this clone existing here is quite interesting because if you come over here and click it, uh, it shows all your existing pages on your website. So all your pages are all here. So you can cycle through them and, and then you can choose which one you want to clone. So let's say you want to clone this walkthroughs page. You can just click on that and then it just clones it and then you just have to rename it. But I wanna show you something that's really cool here. So not only does this feature clone pages, but you can also clone posts uh, products and projects. So let's say you have a WooCommerce product page. You can actually clone that design and then uh, customize it and move it forward. So why would you want to clone pages? Now, there are scenarios where you might want to design a page which is similar to the one that you've just designed. So this is where you can just go in quickly, clone the page, and then add or subtract elements that you don't need. So let's say, for example, here, this walkthroughs page is the one I need to clone. Now, I can't remember what's on this page, but anyway, let's say this is the page. So what happens now is you can just come in here, delete stuff that you don't need. So let's say I'm going to get rid of uh, this section here. So I can just delete it. And then if I need to uh, edit any, any information here, I can just edit it. And then when you publish it, it's saved as a clone of the page that we've just cloned. So that's how easy it is to use. Now, the next feature is also quite cool, but this was recently released. Now, this feature here, I don't even know how to name it, but uh, basically on uh, each and every module, section, and row, and also the options, you have these three little buttons here, okay? So these are your module uh, options or your module settings. So if you click these three little dots here, they show you what you can do with that particular item. So here, for example, I can actually lock this so now you can see that it's locked. Now, if I go back in here, if I click these three little dots, it, I can save this to the library, I can end split test, I can copy the module, I can do so much stuff just by clicking on these three little dots and you'll find these pretty much everywhere. So let me show you where else you can find this. So uh, let's say I go into my section here. If I click these three little dots, again, you can see I can save to library, I can end split test. I can do quite a lot here. So I'm just gonna end split test here because I want to show even more features, okay? So I'm just gonna choose this one here as my main one and then click on publish. Right, so let's switch over here to the front end editor. So if I go into my module settings, you'll find that if I click here on design, you also see these three little dots here right here on the side. They're quite hidden, but um, if you open uh, any of these options here, you will see them. So again, for example, here, if you mouse over this area here, if you click that, you can see you can do a find and replace, you can do a copy, scroll down, icon color, and so on. So this is where these three little dots are very, very useful. All right, so let's move on. My next favorite feature is the transform tool. So let me show you how that works. So uh, let's say I want to transform uh, this <coughs> um, text module here. I can just click here on the settings, click on design, and then over here on transform, there are quite a few options here, but let's say I want to zoom. I can just do that and you can see here, I've just zoomed in there. So I'm just going to uh, close that. I can do this on an image. So pretty much it works on any type of module. So I'm gonna come over here to design again, transform. I can transform, make it bigger, make it a bit smaller and so on. Now, here's a really cool thing. So let's say I want to um, add an animation to this or a hover effect. What I could do is, uh, let's set this to 100%. Okay, so that's how it was before. Let me just go back in here. Right. So what I can do here is I can click here on this arrow and this will take me to my hover effect. So if I click on the hover tab, I can actually 
change the size of this, okay? So I've just brought it down to about, say, 88%. So that's my hover effect. So if I save this now, save the page, and then exit the Visual Builder. Now, what you'll notice is, this is really cool, actually. I'm just going to scroll down here, and you can see here my hover effect has been applied just by using that transform tool, which I was able to zoom out. And this is my animation. Really cool. All right, so um, the, next, uh, the next item I want to talk about, in fact, I've talked about the uh, transform and the hover state. The next thing I'm going to talk about is the filters. Now, the filters are also really, really cool because they save you a lot of time because some of these filters you'll have to do in Photoshop or any of those kind of softwares to really get your effects or your effects on your images. So let me show you how uh, the um, fil filters work. So I'm gonna come back here by enabling the Visual Builder. So I'm gonna use the same image that I added my, um, my zoom effect to. So I'm gonna click here on my settings, click on design, filters. Now, this is where we play around. We can, we can reduce this uh, opacity. So you can see here, it's really, really faded. Now, there are situations where you may want to use this. And this is where, let's say, you want to add a dark text onto this image. So you can really reduce the opacity, add your dark text onto it. And then over here, you can add sepia tones. So you can see here, it really looks cool. So you can actually have the style throughout your whole website on all your images. Now let's move on to the next one. Let's say contrast. Let's say you want to add a bit of contrast onto that. You can see here by just sliding it all the way there, it, uh, it really adds the contrast. And then if you click on undo, it just brings everything back. Now over here, you can add a bit more brightness to this as well, or reduce the brightness. And as I mentioned, these are the sort of tools you get in uh, uh, program softwares like Photoshop. Now over here, you can also add your saturation. So you can increase your saturation here like that. I'm just going to undo this. So this is the uh, filters feature. All right, so let's move on to the next one. And this one also is really cool. It's responsive editing. So what this does is you can actually create different types of um, designs based on which screen uh, people are looking at. So let's say, for example, here, uh, let's use this as an example. Let's say I want to add um, the opacity and I want to show it differently on different mobile devices. Or let's, let's use sepia tone. Right, so all I have to do here for to activate responsive editing is to click on this little icon here and then I can decide what to do now. So let's say, for example, on the tablet, right, I want to add a bit more sepia to this, okay? So I'm just going to put this in view and then increase the sepia, you can see there, I've just added about 30%. And now let's say on the mobile, we are going to even make it more dramatic. Okay, so I'm just going to scroll down here to the to the image. Okay, here it is. So let's say on the phone, I'm just going to make it a bit more dramatic like that. Now, notice what happens. So if I come over here to the tablet, you can see here it's, it's a bit uh, slight, it's 30%. And then over here on the desktop, it's pretty much not there. Okay, so this is how responsive editing works. You can actually have a different designs, a totally different designs depending on the screen size you are adjusting to. So this is fantastic and this applies to pretty much all your modules, sections and um, rows. And over here on the transform as well, let's say you wanna make some changes to your transform, but you want this to be applied to, let's say, um, tablets only or mobile phone only or just a desktop only this is where you can come and choose that all right so that was a responsive editing the next uh, favorite feature is the wireframe mode now believe it or not this feature is really really cool because what you're able to do here is in fact let me close this and show you how you access that so to access it you click these three little dots here expand settings Right now, to access the wireframe mode, you come right over here to the uh, left, click on the wireframe mode button, and this is how it looks like. So, there are cases where you want to drag and drop things really, really fast. So, to do that, you can just do it fast over here because you can visually see what you're dragging over. Now, the second uh, reason why I really like the wireframe mode is you can actually come in here and label 
all your sections, rows, and modules. So for example, here we have text, 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 right? But we're not sure um, what sort of text this is. So let's say this is a heading. I can actually come in here and label this as heading. So next time you want to make specific changes, okay, let's say this is heading and let's say this is paragraph. So let's say after a few weeks, whatever it is, you want to come back here and make some uh, changes to this. If you come to the wireframe mode, you're able to see exactly what it is and what section it is that you're working on. So if you click here on uh, the gear icon and then you click on the front view mode, you can see clearly here that uh, we, are add, we, we are working on this title here. So it's very easy to find, you know, where you are in your design and you can pretty much label, you know, all your module sections and rows. And also the massive advantage with this is if you're using, let's say, the uh, old backend builder, you can just transition into this if you prefer designing in, um, in that mode. And also, as I mentioned, it makes it easier for you to drag and drop things, you know, on your page. So that's why I really love this wireframe mode. Right, so my 10th and final uh, favorite feature is the padding and margin dragging. Right, so this is a feature that was uh, added recently. So let, let's do a quick demo here and let me show you how that would work. So let's say I want to add a color onto uh, this module. So all I have to do is come to my background color, choose my color. In fact, let's go with this one here. Before, what you'll do in order for you to add your padding is to come over here. You would click on design and then you go to spacing, and then you start adding your padding here, okay? Now, that's quite a lot of clicks. So let's say you want to add a padding to this. All you have to do now is to make sure your, uh, your pointer is placed in the right place, and then you can just, once you get that shape, you can just drag just like that. I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to make sure I'm uh, on the inside. I can add my padding. And now let's say I want to add the exact same uh, value. So you can see this little chain icon that has just appeared here. I can just click on that. And now it's 33 on the top, 33 on the bottom. And I'm going to do the same over here. Just drag this slightly to the left. And you can see 36 has appeared. I can just click on that. And now 36 has applied has been applied to the left as well. So this is how you can quickly add padding to this. And every time now you add a bit more, it's applied to both sides, as you can see. So let's say I'm gonna leave this at 42, and then I'm gonna do 42 as well for this. Okay, so now it's 42 all around, and that was how easy it is to add your padding. Now this also works with margins. So if I place my mouse over here, but this time it's gonna be slightly above the border, now I can add my margins just by dragging it like that. So this has saved me quite a few clicks to uh, go into my, uh, uh, my module settings and adding those manually. So this can now be done on the front end editor. Now there's quite a lot more um, uh, features that I can talk about, but these are my favorite ones. So go ahead, give them a try, play around with them. Definitely, they will make your workflow much better and you'll be able to work faster in Divi. All right, now before I go, I just want to remind you again, if you buy Divi using my affiliate link, I will give you access to my Divi Blueprint 3 course worth $247. And I will also throw in my Photoshop for Web Designers course. All you have to do is to buy Divi using my affiliate link. And then you want to go to MacUniversity.com. On the bottom right, there's a button there where you can just notify me that you've bought Divi using my affiliate link. And then I'll give you access to my full course. All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video.